When we attach this animation modifier to our view here, SwiftUI will automatically animate any changes to the view using the default animation whenever this value we're watching changes. In practice, what we get right now in iOS 17 and later is a very gentle spring, which means it'll start fairly quickly, pick up some speed, and then overshoot target just slightly, and then bounce back to its final destination. It's a very, very subtle spring. We can control this type of animation here by using different values for our animation. For example, we could say, give me a linear animation to make the animation move at a constant speed as it goes through. This is actually not very interesting, which is why it's not the default. If I do tap me now, you get sort of a boring straight movement of button. The bounce is much nicer, obviously. Um, if you're curious, by the way, we have to watch a value for these implicit animations because otherwise it would animate every small change to the button. For example, even uh, a rotation to your device going from portrait to landscape would count as an animation thing and it would sort of move things around the screen like that. It'd be very weird and wrong. Anyway iOS uses spring animations by default because they make what we're used to in the real world, They're just like what we see around us. And they are hugely customizable. You can specify roughly how long the spring should take to bounce and also how bouncy the spring should be, where one will bounce a great deal and zero won't bounce at all. For example, we could make our buttons scale up quickly and then bounce a lot. We could say, give me a spring duration of one second, bounce of 0.9 seconds. I'll run it back, and so we now get a very bouncy animation. Let's press it now. Up it goes, down, up, down, down, down. For very bouncy animations like this one, the duration is approximately an oscillation time for the spring, how much it takes to bounce from the top to the bottom again. We can also customize other kinds of spring animations to say exactly how long they should take. For example, we might say, I would like an ease in out animation, which means start slow, pick up speed and slow down at the end, nice and smoothly. I might say, give me a two second easy now animation. Press ground R, give it a try. And I press it now, up it goes and then slows down at the end very smoothly. Now, when we say easy now duration two like this, we're actually making an instance of an animation struct, which has its own set of modifiers. I think I dogs like animations too. Uh, and so we can attach modifiers to the animation to make it behave differently. For example, I might say, I wanna have an easy and out animation, duration two seconds, but I wanna wait one second first. And so let's add, add a few line breaks here to make it easy to read. I'll add one here, one here, and one there. This thing is our animation struct. So I might say, easy and out duration two, but add a delay of one second the animation. And that's modifying the ease and out value here, the ease and out animation. And now when I press Command R, <laughs> it'll run back. And when I tap the button, you'll see, watch carefully, wait one second, and now run. Look good. <laughs> so it gets a delay before the animation starts playing. We can also add other things here. For example, I could say, I want to repeat the animation a certain number of times. Let's say, ease and out duration two, with a repeat count of three, auto versus true. Let's run that code back. So now it should go all the way up. Then that's one time, all the way down, that's two times, and all the way up again, that's three times, stop. Now, if we had set repeat count to be two, rather than three, we'd get something quite different. Watch this. It's going to uh, press the button, scale up, scale down, and then bang, jump back up to top again. What's happening here is running the repeat count twice, all the way up, all the way down as promised. But then ultimately, when it finishes the animation, it must match the state of our program, regardless of what animations we apply. And so, what this means is when the animation finishes, it must match a scale effect of animation amount and the blur of animation amount minus one times three. Animation amount is now two, so it must be double its size. So even though it went up and then down again, it finished the animation, it has to match the correct state of our, our program afterwards. If you want to, you can make repeating forever animations. You just say dot repeat forever. I'll do auto versus true here like that. And now it's going to uh, scale up and down forever and ever and ever, like so. Boom, up and down. And then back up again, 
forever. And we can use these repeat forever animations in combination with on appear, to get an animation that starts immediately when our view is shown and continues for the life of the view. To demonstrate this, we're gonna remove this animation from the button itself and instead make an overlay to create some kind of pulsating circle around our button. Overlays are made using a modifier called overlay and they let us create new views at the same size and position on the screen as the view we're overlaying. And so first things first, we're gonna add a modifier before animation called overlay, like this. Overlay, please wanna add a circle inside here that is stroked in red with a scale effect of our animation amount, like that. And opacity will be two minus animation amount. Parts that simple, overlay a circle, fine. Make it stroked red, it's got a red line around it, fine. Make it scale up to animation amount, that's also fine. This bit, opacity two minus animation amount, this one matters. So when animation amount is one, we're gonna do two minus one, it'll be 100% opaque, it'll be fully visible, opacity one will be fully there. But when animation amount is two, we do two minus two making zero, it'll fade out to zero, the circle will be transparent. And now we're gonna take this blur and scale effect uh, modifiers off our button, like that, leaving just the overlay. And we're also gonna comment out this thing, adding one to animation amount when the button's pressed. We don't wanna change that by hand anymore. Now, what we're gonna do is move this animation modifier. We were previously animating the button. Now, we're gonna take it out of there, I'll just Command X the whole thing, boom, and put it onto the circle, like that. So we have circle, stroke, red, scale effect, opacity, and then animation. I'll change this to be, uh, let's do ease out duration one. So it starts quickly, slows down at the end. But repeat forever, I'm gonna make auto reverse false, not true. So it jumps back to the beginning every time, but still leave on animation amount. Otherwise, more or less the same. Finally, we're gonna add an on appear modifier here. Do on appear, animation amount equals two. Now, because the overlay thing here, the thing we're overlaying has that value for its repeat animation right here, without auto reversing, you're gonna see hopefully our overlay circle appear and fade out again, again, again. So the overlay circle initially matched the size of our, our main button circle here, but it scales up and fades out repeatedly. And because auto reverse is false, it doesn't go in, out, in, out, again, again, again. It goes out, stop, out, stop, again, again. So, given how little work this was, it's not a lot of work, I don't think, I think it creates a remarkably attractive effect.